Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Welcome back. This is a new video as part of the 2013-2014 MTEL Math Workshop Series. Today we're going to be working on number 21. This is the 53 Math MTEL. Now, this is a great problem if you're a teacher preparing for a math certification exam, regardless of the test, because it has so many of the core ideas in math. Let's take a closer look. Number 21. Use the figure below to answer the question that follows. Gives us a diagram. Then it says the large cube in figure 1 represents one unit. What is the decimal representation of figure 2? And then it gives us these answer choices. Sometimes it's helpful to, it is always helpful, to observe what you're given and look for details. I'm going to start with this sentence here. The large cube in figure 1 represents one unit. We could think of one unit as a whole or 100%. What is the decimal representation of figure 2? Decimal representation, what is the percent, what is the fraction? These are all part to whole relationships, another way of expressing a part to whole relationship. All right, so I'm, I know I'm going to be thinking in terms of part to whole, and it, sometimes it's helpful when you think in terms of part to whole just to really quickly identify what's your part and what's your whole. In this case, the, the cube is going to be your whole, and the part, if I add up all these, um, these ones right here, that's going to be my part to whole relationship. Because remember, whenever you see this, it could just as well have been what percent, it could just as well have been what fraction, right? I'll just do something, I'm just giving a fraction out, that's not the fraction. All right, so those are all clues. Also, this definitely unit here, that's a clue that you're dealing with, you know, some, one of these things is 100%. All right, so we'll come back to the partial relationship in a moment. Um, and then it gives me these answer choices. Now, I'm thinking of part to whole, so right away, I am hoping, and I know there are teachers out there that say, wait, part to whole, what is that connected to? Remember, in previous videos, we talked about core fractions. And your mind has to start getting trained to see the core fractions. You might not be ready now, but you've got to get your mind in gear. What core fraction is this? Well, these two answers, A and B, are closest to z this decimal, 0.25. And C, 0 0.536, is closest to this. And this one right here is actually closest. We round this to 60. Uh, um, we could round this to 67. Um, what we have here, it's actually 0 0.66666. Where am I going with this? Well, the core fractions, the core partial relationships, are either going to be 1 fourth, 1 half, or 2 thirds. What? Huh? Well, look, the question is asking you to determine what part of the entire shape is, the, is, are the, is figure 2. So you're going to be finding out whatever, what you're going to be comparing these two in a part to relationship. And you're going to try and figure out which one of these is, is the part to relationship like a one-fourth relationship, a one-half, or two-thirds. Now, just by knowing that, you may be able to look at these and say, hey, you know what, Chris? This is definitely not one quarter. It, this is these, one, two, these shapes here that make up the part are way more than a quarter. And just by knowing that, you might be able to eliminate answer choices B and C, which means you've increased your chances in getting this problem correct significantly. All right, so now that we've, we're thinking in terms of part to whole, Let's find out the part to whole. I think that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to look at my, first I'm going to start with my whole. My whole, it's got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, one, two, three, four, five. So it's actually got five by five by five. And we're thinking of uh, length times width times height. Length times width times height. So I want you to, as I do this, I want you to calculate what would be, how many little cubes are there? What's 5 times 5 times 5? And your answer is, should be 125. Now I didn't, I didn't just guess that or know that particularly. I've done this problem a couple times and there have been plenty of times when I've had to do 25, you know, that's 5 times 5 times the 5. 
you know, and start multiplying these out, carrying the numbers, multiplying it out, regrouping, and getting this answer. I don't want you to take that for granted. Never take it for granted. Do it out. That way you get the practice and you don't make any careless mistakes. So I know that I got a whole of 125. What's this? This is this is 5 by 5. So that's like 25, 25. Each one of these are 5. So combined, that would be what? 15. And this is just 2. I add up all my parts, get 67. So now we have 67 over 125. And I'm supposed to match this up with a core fraction? Are you crazy? Well, there are a couple strategies you could do real quickly. One, you could say 6 over 12 is, is C. We're done. <laughs> well, 6 over 12 is 1 half. And that would be equal to 0 0.5. And in fact, that's the answer. But let's say we weren't, you know, ready to do that. Um, we could think about this in terms of um, given approximation. You know, just, you know, how could we approximate these numbers? Well, the 67 I could approximate to 70. And the 125 I could approximate to 30. I could reduce by a factor of 5. And I would get this new fraction, 7 over 13. Now, at this point, if I wasn't so sure if it was either C or D, I could take an extra step. And I could divide the 7 by 13. And I could just, I could just be 100% sure on you know, what this is. So I'm, I'm preparing myself to do that. 13 doesn't go into 7. I'm doing the division all the way out. It goes into uh, 70 five times. So I, I multiply those out. I get 65. Subtract them. Remainder 5. Drop down to 0. 13 goes into 50, what, three times? 39, and there would be some remainder. I don't really have to go any further than this. I mean, at, at this point, I've done it enough. I found out that 7 over 13 is equal to 0 0.53, um, and that's the closest to C, and that's the answer. So what were we doing in this problem? Because there was a lot. We got to C. Well, we read through it, we took a glance, and we saw that it, right away there was a lot of clues that it had to do with partial relationships. I used that to start looking at the answers and frame the, the answers in terms of part to whole by looking for the core fractions. Now once I have that in mind, that I'm looking for either one-fourth, one-half, or two-thirds, then it was a little easier for me to sort of work through this problem thinking in terms of part to whole, coming up with a fraction, converting that into a fraction that is reduced or, or relatively reduced, and then, you know, finding the rep decimal representation of that fraction, or just taking a stab at it and getting to one half, which was, you know, the 6 over 12. <laughs> so hopefully you found this helpful, insightful, exciting, and I hope that you study it and practice it on your own. Thank you so much, team, for watching this video. We got a lot more to do to help you get ready. And if you need extra help, um, je definitely check out Go Math for the MTEL Math workshops, okay? Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Hi, team. I wanted to uh, encourage everyone, if you have time, to check out one of the MTEL Math workshops. This is a great time to make new connections in the math. It's two days, one or two day workshop. Uh, you can go to Go Math and find out more information. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.